Hello, it's your girl Sarah, and I'm back today to talk liver biopsy. I don't have the results yet. It could be one to two weeks for pathology to get back to me, but I realize I process things a little bit better. There we go. I process things a little bit better when I blog about them or vlog about them or talk about them, and I've just been turning over this experience in my mind. I'm going to try to keep most of the gross stuff out of it. Um, but yeah, this is a medical procedure and I'm actually going to talk about it because I had no idea. Um, I really had no idea. So as a reminder, uh, liver enzymes, actin, antibodies of the liver not showing up great. Working theory is that I have autoimmune hepatitis. There's no way to diagnose that without analyzing the liver tissue. And that is through a biopsy, which in layperson's term is stick needle into body and retrieve a piece of liver. Not excited about that and went through all the stages, <laughs> not of grief, but for me, it's anxiety. But the day before, I just thought, all right, I can do this. I was kind of on an upswing. I had done another blood draw and it had gone really well. What I mean by that is that, sorry, there's a very cute little bunny. It's springtime. So it's little bunnies on the lawn. Anyway, focus. Um, I done a blood draw a few days before and you probably don't know, I get pretty nauseous and lightheaded. The place I was getting the blood draw, they were great. Didn't have a place to lay down. So I did my first blood draw sitting up in decades. Yeah, but I did it. So I was feeling positive about myself and I've been working a lot on my control distortions, <laughs> basically recognizing, yeah, there's, there's nothing you control in this procedure. You just do the prep and you show up and you trust the doctors. Um, so yeah, so Friday morning, 6.30 a.m. was admitted to the hospital. And it's kind of a, if you've had a procedures like this, it's a, I don't know if an award is not the right word. I feel like I've been watching too much of Call the Midwife. It's an area of the hospital where they have about 20 or so rooms for patients. I realize this is primarily cardiac patients, so that was interesting and a perspective check. So you have your own room. It's got sliding doors and curtains opening on to a central area. It's not an inpatient procedure, um, but you tend to be at the hospital for about six to eight hours, which is what I was there for. Came in, did all of the vital stuff. They also check for procedures like this, do a blood draw to make sure that you your blood clots appropriately. Um, and also you can't take blood thinners, so my blood clots very well. Start you on an IV and then um, just kind of hanging out in the room. They also make you order your lunch ahead of time. I not spent a lot of time in hospitals, but like the menu actually looked nice. Um, so ordered, ordered, pre-ordered a lunch and they had a little TV with a bunch of actually decent movies. So I just watched Pixar. So it's about two hours before, between being admitted at 630 and the procedure at 830 in the morning. And then about half an hour before the procedure, the interventional radiologist came in. So I'm still learning a lot about interventional radiology. This is a doctor who is performing these procedures. Um, I can't go down the rabbit hole of that. So this is Dr. K. Really like Dr. K. Dr. K was cool. Dr. K, very calming, great bedside manner, very thoughtful, um, very, I don't know, there's an interesting blend that I like in physicians where you have this blend of humility and confidence. And I felt very comfortable. I hadn't met Dr. K before. But I think for any future procedures, I want to work with Dr. K because Dr. K, he was awesome. So he's starting to explain the procedure and I, I basically understood um, what it was. So they take you into a procedure room and they use the, and I'm going to, this is so embarrassing. I, you know how there are some things you just can't keep straight. So for me, it was always ibuprofen and Tylenol. Now I understand the difference because I can't take ibuprofen. Um, and actually with liver problems, you can't take Tylenol. I'm running out of options here, people. MRI and CAT scan. I just was like, well, which one is which? So it believes a CAT scan guided procedure. So that's the donut as opposed to the tube. 
Uh, so basically they use uh, the machine, the imaging to precisely figure out where they're going to biopsy you. And then they do that. So he was explaining the procedure, you're going to the procedure room, we're going to do the scan, and then I'm going to do the biopsies. And this is where he lost me. He said, uh, so I want to let you know what it might sound like, just so you're not surprised, which by the way, I mean, amen to doctors who help you understand the process. And he said, yeah, it sounds like a stapler or a, the needle will sound like a stapler or a staple gun. What? Uh, so he lost me at that point. And I mean, I'm already pale. I assume I got paler. And he goes, do you have any questions? And I was like, can we go back to the stapling part? Uh, but again, I, I think it was really great because what a horrible thing to, to hear and not understand what's happening to you. And he'd asked how, how I felt. I have questions. And I said, no, I don't have any questions. I'm just feeling really anxious about it. Just being honest about it. And he, he was great. He said, yeah, that's normal. Um, and any questions about the procedure, let me know. Talk about the sedation. And that was that. So 8.30, the procedure nurse came in. I feel terrible because I don't remember her name, but she was phenomenal. Just like such a nice person. Wheeled me in my little bed down to the procedure room and rolled me in and I'm, I'm of course i'm prone i'm lying on my back they get me on the cat scan bed which moves in and out of the donut so if you ever had a cat scan you know what i'm talking about um get me prepped there is the the person who runs the machine i don't actually know the proper name for that person he was also very nice so basically what they're doing is getting me prepped they so as a reminder <laughs> I had this idea that the liver was a lot lower down in the abdomen than it is. Okay, so it's on the right side. I know this looks like my left, but it's the right side. So I assumed it's like way down here. No, it is actually way up in here. <laughs> I should not have done that. It's way up in here. Um, so my my scar is actually right at the, the like the bra line or the heart monitor line where that would be. That's the incision point. So it makes it a little bit difficult because it's up. I mean, those are their ribs in there, right? So we're avoiding that. Huh. So they put a grid on my abdomen and they do a couple of scans and then that's to get the imaging of my abdomen and the liver and then for the physician to find his sight, find his, find his, his approach, which made it sound like a pilot. I guess I felt a little bit better about that. So in this procedure room, so I think you all know I have terrible vision, or if you don't, I have terrible vision. I was wearing my glasses instead of contacts, just kind of a best practice for procedures not to have contacts. So I'm lying prone on my back. This is a procedure room, so it's bright AF in there. Um, the nurse, I mean, I've got this blood pressure cuff that's going. I've got heart monitor thing on. I've got the finger for the pulse. And... And then these machines start making noise and I, I was just kind of an overwhelm. So I was just doing my breathing. Also have a mask on, obviously. So just like trying to slow my respiration. And the, nur the nurse was talking to me throughout this and saying, yeah, I've got this, you know, I'm supposed to worry about this. And I'm laying there on my back and uh, Dr. K had made the mark, getting ready to do the procedure. And the nurse said, hey, how are you doing? Sarah, this is right after they did the check to be like, this is your name and your birthday and here's what we're doing. And it was just this moment of, I don't know if it was overwhelm or sadness. And I, she said, how are you doing? And I said, I'm scared because I was. And it just, it was one of those, like, I'm such an ugly crier, but I like to think that was a beautiful, like three tears. And she says, oh, do you want me to take your glasses? And I said, yes, because I didn't want to see anything else. Just didn't want to see it. That helped. And then I said, when, when do I get the sedation? And she's like, we're almost there, we're almost there. I've been told the sedation that there are different people react to it differently. Some people are conscious and awake the whole procedure. Some people are, are just like not there. I was sitting there and she said, okay, I'm going to start the sedation. And it's the weirdest feeling. It's just this flood. And I was gone. 
I vaguely remember Dr. K saying that we're done. I vaguely remember getting my glasses back. I vaguely remember thanking these people. I am so thankful though that I have no, I, I maybe I was answering. I don't, I don't have no memory of it. And so I'm, I'm so grateful, so grateful for that sedation that just couldn't, couldn't tell you what happened. Don't know, did not hit a stapler. Um, yeah, so wheeled me back to my room and then the next couple hours just sort of dozed on and off. It was hard to sleep because the, the blood pressure cuff is still hooked up to my room and it's automatically taking vitals. Um, machines are making noise and then they have to check my incision incisions to make sure they're not bleeding. So with a liver biopsy, that's the number one thing they need to make sure is that you're not, the incision sites are not bleeding. They inject, Dr. K said, I don't remember what the substance was, they inject something into the um, biopsy sites to help with the clotting. So it's really good, but it's more painful. So kind of woozy in and out. And the good news is, is it just, it, it seems like a textbook procedure. And then the nurse would come in and I started to wake up a little bit. And this is a couple hours later. And she said, okay, I'm going to order your lunch. And I said, oh, I'm not hungry. So it sounds like they, I don't want to say they require you to eat, but they want you to eat. Um, I don't know if that's, uh, as I was reading about, it sounds like some theories are it's to make sure that you're not very nauseous, which can be a, a bad sign. It can also be that they just want you to have some energy because you've got to walk out of there. So ate my food, kept watching Pixar movies, and it was fine. It was I was fine. I was starting to feel a little more a little more awake, and then the pain started, and that was not great. They do, and I'm actually reading about this. They do give you fentanyl during the procedure. And so after the procedure, I, I try not to take those types of pain, well, obviously not fentanyl, oh my goodness. Um, I asked for Tylenol. They won't give you Tylenol if it's a liver procedure, even though my doctor has said Tylenol is fine. So they have to give you opiates, which I was not thrilled about, but I was starting to feel pain. About one o'clock, I was discharged. So 6.30 in, one o'clock out, I was able to walk up to the car. My husband was there, took me home. And the rest of the day was just weird. I was just in and out of sleep. Uh, the pain started to come back. And this was actually the scariest part. So the incision sites or the the area of the abdomen just feels like you've been kicked in the chest. Um, so it was painful, but I didn't know this. Um, this sort of procedure, there's a lot of pain that can be referred, nerve pain that can be referred. And the most common place it's referred to the liver is the right shoulder. This looks like my left, is my right? Um, so I was laying on my left side because uh, that was what they recommended. And just, I was so out of it, I just fell asleep on the couch. I think I took maybe three naps just in and out of consciousness. And I went to sit up. I have never felt pain like that in my life. The shoulder pain, the nerve referral pain. I don't think my husband understood how painful it was or it was just, I don't think he got it. I, it was 10 out of 10. I've never felt pain like that in my entire life. Not even slamming my hand on the door. Um, so I'm just screaming, um, because of it and like doubled over. So this pain here all the way down to the liver. Anyway, come and find out that's normal. And I sort of knew that, but it was just completely surprising. So then I had to take opiates, which I did not enjoy. And it was just, it was a crappy day. It was a crappy day. It was a crappy day. Um, but the good news is, is the, the biopsy sites are fine. I've been monitoring them. Um, you can't do vigorous exercise, can't lift stuff. So sorry, cat. Um, you know, can't get water in, in it for a while. A bunch of stuff like that. But it is healing. You can see, um, you can see the entry wounds. There are vertical the bruises that look like this. <laughs> that is crazy. So today is day, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Today's Tuesday. So it's four, four full days post-procedure. Um, it hurt to laugh and breathe for a while, but now that feels okay. It's just minimal pain in the liver and in the shoulder. 
Now I do know what liver pain feels like. And now we're waiting. Now we're waiting to see from pathology what has happened. It could be one to two weeks. I keep getting faked out because I get messages through my portal. And it doesn't tell you what it is. I don't know if you have a doctor portal, doctor's portal like this. It'll be like, you have a new message from your doctor. And the first one was a bill. <laughs> Great. Thanks for that. First one was a bill. Then it was my negative COVID test from Wednesday. Great. Then it was my clotting test from Friday. So it keeps faking me out. And so this morning I got one and I thought, oh, this will be it. And then I realized, no, I just want to talk about the procedure. So, yep, that was the procedure. I, I did it. I can do it again. I know I can do it. And uh, biopsies are weird. Sticking needles into organs feels weird, but thank God for science. Like science and medicine is pretty amazing that this minimally invasive procedure is going to allow us to know what's going on. Okay, this is longer than I thought, but that's a liver biopsy. Thanks y'all for the support. I'll come back hopefully in the next, hopefully this week, maybe next week when I'm on vacation, um, when I'm off from work to tell you what, what the results are. Can't wait. Bye y'all.